Hey guys, today we're going to go over the female endocrine system. We're going to focus on the endocrinology as related to the cycles. So we're going to go over the specialized hormones uh, and, and, and how they work inside the body. So real quick, what I'm going to write over here, just to remind ourselves that it's the hypothalamus that produces a hormone called GnRH. GnRH is going to stimulate the anterior pituitary and it's going to stimulate the uh, two special hormones of the anterior pituitary, FSH and LH. Okay, and that's what we see up here. So keep in mind that these two hormones we're going to talk about in a minute come from the anterior pituitary and they are going to like we're going to see in a minute they're going to stimulate the gonads okay um they're going to stimulate the ovaries in this case which are the gonads the ovaries are going to produce estrogen and progesterone there they are there estrogen and progesterone so one of the things you want to uh, make sure you know when you're going through all this is know where these hormones come from. We're looking at what they do, their action on the female body and on the reproductive system of the female. But you want to make sure you know where these hormones come from. FSH and LH are pituitary hormones. They are produced in the anterior pituitary. Obviously, GnRH stands for gonadotropin, releasing hormone. It comes from the hypothalamus. And estrogen and progesterone are produced in the ovaries. Okay, keep that in mind. Now, let's go over the cycles. There's actually cycles plural. There's two cycles in uh, the female reproductive system. There's the ovarian cycle, okay, which is everything happening in the ovary every month. And then there's a uterine or menstrual cycle, and that's everything happening in the uterus. The two cycles essentially, I mean, are separate, but they're running parallel. Okay, so you picture, here's day one, and then we go all the way to day 14. So this would be the first half of the cycle, which is a first, basically, set of weeks one and two, so, so two weeks. I always think of it as, a, as, as the first two weeks, okay? And then, of course, this is the second two weeks, so it would be weeks three and weeks four. So we're going to see things play out that way. Let's look at what's happening in the ovary first, okay? This would be our ovarian cycle. The first two weeks, we have a phase called the follicular phase, okay? And what's happening in this phase is that we're getting maturing of the follicle, okay? The follicle is housing the egg, which is called an oocyte. So we're getting maturing of the follicle and preparing of the egg for ovulation, okay? That's what we're getting this first half. So the egg is getting ready to be released by the ovary. It's actually going to be released by the follicle, and it's going to be released by the ovary. When does that release take place? It takes place on day 14 and is referred to as ovulation. There's actually a surge in the hormone LH that triggers ovulation, okay? But leading up to that, this whole preparation, for the, which again is the maturing of the follicle, the preparation of the egg, uh, it, that, this, first two weeks is dominated by the hormone FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, okay? So FSH dominate, dominates, which makes sense, the follicular phase, okay? So that leads us again to ovulation. Ovulation occurs again where the follicle and the egg itself, or, or the egg I should say is leaving the follicle and it's leaving the ovary at the same time, okay? The egg is good for 24 hours after ovulation, meaning it is viable for conception or fertilization up to 24 hours after ovulation, okay? So we say up to, like, say, the day 15. And then after that, too late, and it's going to uh, have to be released again the next month for possible fertilization, okay? So then after day 14, after ovulation occurs, we go into the second phase, the luteal phase, which is going to be weeks three, three and four, dominated by the hormone LH, luteinizing hormone, 
Again, this makes sense based on the name. And LH is going to stimulate the corpus luteum to produce progesterone. Okay, what is the corpus luteum? It's the empty follicle. So the follicle, remember, is releasing the egg over here, and then the egg is leaving the ovary. That empty follicle becomes known as the corpus luteum, and it produces progesterone. Okay? Um, then we jump down to what's happening in the menstrual cycle. Now up here, during this follicular phase, one of the things that's happening is estrogen is being produced in higher amounts. So we come down here to this menstrual cycle. We see we've got the phase referred to the first two weeks, and it's referred to again as the proliferative phase. The dominant hormone is estrogen, okay? So again, estrogen's made in the ovary, but it's gonna work down here in the uterus. So what's happening is, you kind of have to picture what happens uh, at the very beginning of the cycle and at the very end of the cycle. So basically, there's shedding of the endometrium if a woman's not pregnant. So picture the endometrial lining. The lining is called the stratum functionalis. It's the functional layer. It's, it's basically the uh, superficial layer of the endometrial wall gets shed, and that creates the bleeding. The official kind of textbook definition of when the bleeding occurs is going to be day one. So bleeding occurs at day one, right after the shedding. So picture the shedding just happened, bleeding starts at day one, and now there is no superficial layer of, of the endometrial wall. So what's going to happen? The proliferative phase is going to allow for the regrowth of that endometrial layer, the stratum functionalis. So what's happening? It's estrogen that's stimulating the proliferation of the endometrium. The word proliferation tells you that it is regrowing. It's a regeneration, which means mitosis is occurring in this two week period of time. Okay, that leads us then to the second half of the cycle. Notice progesterone, which was made uh, in the ovary, is gonna dominate the second phase, weeks three and four, which is the secretory phase. And what's progesterone gonna do? It's gonna stimulate thickening of the endometrium. So picture here, there's no, uh, no uh, superficial layer of endometrium. So it's growing, 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 literally by mitosis, right? Getting more and more numerous uh, on a cellular level. So it's growing, 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 growing. Then we move into the second phase where progesterone takes over and what happens? It gets thicker now. So there's no mitosis in weeks three and weeks four. It's getting thicker, 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 all the way till the end. And again, if pregnancy didn't occur, we said pregnancy is gonna to have to occur between day 14 and 15. If pregnancy doesn't occur, then at the very end, like we mentioned uh, uh, earlier, we're gonna get shedding of the endometrium again. And then again, day one, the bleeding starts. Okay, so again, this is everything happening in the uterus. Now keep in mind this, there's a lot happening in the uterus. It's all related to basically the, the regrowth and the shedding of the endometrial lining. There's no hormones produced in the uterus. Estrogen and progesterone obviously work on the uh, uterus in these phases, but there's no uh, hormones produced by the uterus. So keep that in mind. If somebody has a hysterectomy, but they retain their ovaries, then there's no change in their hormone levels. They have a complete hysterectomy where the uterus and the ovaries are removed, then obviously the hormones are then affected. So keep that in mind. Again, the ovarian cycle is everything that happened in the ovaries. And yes, we have hormone production up here. Again, estrogen and progesterone are produced here. And finally, don't forget, yes, FSH and LH are working in the ovary, dominating these phases, but they were produced where? They were produced up in the pituitary, okay, the anterior pituitary. So that's the whole rundown on the female endocrinology for the reproductive system. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Uh, stay tuned for a male endocrinology reproductive system rundown soon. Thanks, good luck, good study.